What causes heart attack? Can you tell the difference between a myth and fact? Heart attack is only due to gradual narrowing of the heart arteries from cholesterol deposits. The fact is, narrowing of heart arteries from cholesterol deposits contributes to risk of heart attack, but it is just one of many risks. Other strong risks are smoking, diabetes, high bad cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, poor diet, lack of the right type and level of exercise, etc. The artery gradually accumulates plaque and narrowing to reach complete blockage, then that is when heart attack will occur. Heart attack will not happen if the artery doesn't have any serious blockages. The fact is, Heart attack happens due to a tear in an unhealthy artery wall, which triggers off a chain reaction that causes rapid formation of blood clot and complete blockage. Even when the artery doesn't have severe narrowing, this tear and blood clot can still happen suddenly and completely stop blood supply to the heart causing a heart attack. It is very hard to predict when a heart attack will happen. It's like predicting a road traffic accident. If we find severe narrowing earlier and open up the artery with a stent, we can prevent a heart attack. The fact is, even when a stent is put in to unblock a severe narrowing, a clot can still form because the stent is made of metal. Our body naturally produces a reaction to metal which may cause rapid formation of clot, especially when blood thinning medication is not taken regularly as prescribed. Other stent-related factors may also cause blood clots to form. Stenting is beneficial following a heart attack or for severe narrowing as it helps improve symptoms. But remember, even minor narrowing can suddenly become complete blockage and cause a heart attack. Heart attack can still happen as long as there are conditions that make it likely to occur. Smoking increases the risk of blood clots and is the most important risk factor for heart attack in the young. The toxins in the cigarette can easily cause harmful damage to the inner lining of your blood vessels and trigger a heart attack. Seek help to quit smoking. There are many resources available to help you to quit smoking. If you think you cannot quit it completely, try doing it gradually by reducing the number of cigarettes you take a day. Regular exercise improves vessel function and reduces unstable plaque formation. It also helps to burn calories and maintain a healthy body weight. An ideal, healthy BMI for Asians should be between 18.5 to 22.9. Perform at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise a week, split into 3 to 5 sessions. If you are going to start exercising regularly, remember to pace yourself and progress slowly. High sugar levels in your blood can also damage the inner lining of your blood vessels and increase the chance of a heart attack. Control the amount of high glycemic index and high sugar foods you take. Go for regular checkups and test for diabetes if you are currently diabetic, you should aim for HbA1c level of at least 7 and below. High LDL increases the likelihood of having unstable plaque in your arteries which tends to cause heart attack. Every 1 millimole per liter lowering of LDL by statin treatment lowers major vascular events such as heart attack and stroke by more than 20%. Aim for an LDL level of less than 2.6 millimoles per liter to decrease your risk of heart attack. The higher your blood pressure, the more likely you are to develop unstable plaque in your arteries that can rupture and cause a heart attack or stroke. Aim for systolic blood pressure of 130 millimeters of mercury and below. If you have high blood pressure, work with your doctor for a treatment plan to control it. A right diet is associated with a significant decrease in the risk of strokes and heart attacks. Take at least two servings of vegetables and fresh fruits a day. If you are on statin medication, take your medications as per your doctor's advice. Now you know, when it comes to reducing the chance of having a heart attack, 
it is not only the doctor who can help you, a large part of it is in your hands too.